think we live in a, such a tragic, tragic, dark times right now. The verse that comes to my mind is Isaiah where it says that arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you and behold darkness has covered the earth. What happened with COVID-19 is darkness covered the earth. But before COVID left, deep darkness covered the people. We thought COVID was bad. What's happening right now is getting even worse. Almost everybody forgot about COVID-19. The restrictions for social distancing and masking all disappeared. Because now we have another problem that has risen. Why? Because darkness covered the earth. Deep darkness covers the people. My friend, the solution in this day and hour is the presence of Jesus. Because that's the only thing that can take the evil heart out of a man and change it into a kind heart. Like Pastor Ilya said and I want to emphasize is that you cannot legalize evil. We can put rules. If we think that rules work, they never worked for Israel. The day that Israel received the Ten Commandments is the day they broke them. And it's that day 3,000 people, the Bible says they died. But the day the Holy Spirit came, 3,000 people got saved. And so the solution for us we understand as Christians. Now for the world you know who don't have Christ, yes we push for that, we push for that. We have to protest, we have to speak out, we have to speak for our brothers and sisters, we have to speak for those that nobody speaks 100%. But at the end of the day if God does not take the heart of stone and give us the heart of flesh, my friend it's putting perfume on a casket, it's putting a dress code on a corpse, it doesn't make the corpse come alive. What makes a person come alive is the blood of Jesus Christ. Is the repentance from sin and faith in Jesus Christ. Can somebody give God some praise? And that's why I think like guys like Martin Luther King, you know, who knew the gospel and who knew that the change is not in violence. The change, you know, right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing hurt. And when hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. Only gospel helps to hurt people, to channel their hurt in the healing process, in a healing way. For those of you who've been married, and I understand that, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you need to speak up against the violence that is happening in the protests. And, and I believe it's wrong. What destroying people's properties, hurting people because you're hurt is wrong. There's no justification for that. And it takes away from the real issue that we are feeling and we are seeing in our nation today. It overshadows the real injustice and the racism, the violence and the looting and, and taking all of this stuff that is happening right now on the streets. It reminds me of the story of Absalom. He was so hurt by the fact that his dad never wanted to talk to him that he told Joel, he says, I want to speak to the king and Joel never responded. And you know what Absalom did? He went and set Joel's house, Joel's field on fire. That was his way of getting hurt. But Absalom is not an example of godliness in the Bible. And I think for us, for every person here today who is married, you know sometimes when you're hurt in marriage, when you're not hurt in marriage, you do dumb stuff. So before we go blaming the protesters for all the stuff and what they're doing is wrong, people with violence who are taking this violently, we, we, we go against that. But we also have to have sympathy because we all know what it's like to hurt and say stuff and do stuff in our hurt that hurts other people. We all need God. Victim or perpetrator. Those who are hurt and those who are doing hurting. We all need Jesus. We all need God. Can somebody say amen? And we need God to heal our land. And we need to have the Holy Spirit give us new hearts and new, and, and new mindset and new attitudes in this day and hour. And I like what Isaiah prophesied. said. He says, arise and shine. Church, it's our time to rise. We are the salt of this earth. We are the light of this earth. Right now, there's more division that's happening on social media than has ever happened in any other place. More people that are ripping this country apart who are believers. If you didn't speak out fast enough against this violence, you're guilty. If you spoke enough but didn't have tears, you're guilty. If you spoke too much, you don't like the other side. There's so much division that's going on and I believe that most of us need to get off of social media and get on our face before God and seek the face of God. Stop listening to CNN and Fox as God's inspired word. Pick up the Bible and find solution in Jesus. Come on somebody.
I even one time same thing seeing you know even different pastors pastors you know friends of mine terrified I see sometimes you know the governor said he will do this this governor said he will do this there are threats and I see people trembling in front of the words of the government my Bible makes me to understand that God will look on those who tremble before his word and I wonder what would happen if we as Christians turn off the media for just a little bit and go into God's Word and shake and tremble before God's Word and say, God, I live for you. God, I will obey you. God, I will follow you to the end of my life. Nobody's... I am not advocating rebellion and I'm not saying that we have to disrespect and dishonor but at the end of the day, for God's sake, we're Christians. We follow Christ. We're not first Americans and then Christians. We're Christians who happen to be Americans. We're not Republicans. We are Christians. And we have to arise and shine. Not arise and shine in a political vendetta but arise and shine in God. There is only one light and that light is not in a white house. It's at the white throne. And Isaiah says in here, that's not in my nose. I don't know where this is coming from but <laughs> behold the darkness covered the earth and the deep darkness covers the people. You know when the darkness covered the whole earth it, it, it's, it's horrible but what's happening right now it's, it's heartbreaking. It's heart-wrenching seeing a man standing, a black man defending his store because the people coming in are destroying his store completely. People destroying, killing other, more deaths are happening right now than happened by that unjust act of that police officer. Deep darkness is covering the people. But the Lord will rise over you. My friend, it's time to shift our focus back from culture to Christ. You can't help the culture if you are indoctrinated by the culture. If you are influenced by the culture. If you are drunk with the same thing that they drink from. You can only influence something if you're not in it. You got to be above it. And to do that we have to show love, we have to show peace, we have to show compassion. If we do that we have to bring the real change and the Bible says and the Lord will rise over you. And then you can rise above that. And you can be not a divider but a uniter in your family, in your community and in our church. The Lord will rise over you and His glory will be seen upon you. Gentiles will come to your light, not to your opinion. Not to your Facebook post, not to your meme video that only brings division but to your light and that light is nothing else but the fire of the Holy Ghost. When the fire of God is burning inside it produces light. My friend, world needs light. They don't need another opinion. They don't even need another video of somebody saying that hey I'm against this and against that and that's all they do. They need light. They need love and they need the Lord. The world will come to your light. The kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons come from afar. That speaks of discipleship. That we're called to make disciples, not just make statements. Your daughters will be nursed at your side and they will come. And you shall see and become radiant. And your heart will swell with joy, not depression. Because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you and the wealth of the Gentiles will come to you. Come on somebody. I believe God is raising up a revival. God is wants to rise on us. He wants us to redirect our focus back to Him in this perilous, difficult and unsettling times. The country I come from, there is a war that's going on between Russia and Ukraine. My wife is Russian, I'm Ukrainian. About four years ago, Tri-City Herald did an article that says, house divided. You know, these two people, they don't live together. They, they hate each other. There's, there's, there's a, this division that is happening there where, where I come from. My friend, it's happening everywhere where there are humans because if there are humans, there's evil. And there's evil because of Adam and Eve and it's plaguing our nation and plaguing our country. And we see that, we hate that and that's why we have to redirect our focus, our focus to Jesus. Redirect our desire toward Jesus and when He rises above us, we no longer react, we respond. We no longer vomit our feelings, we speak because we've spent time in the presence of God and we speak from the light. We don't just go in and just because a lot of what I see on Facebook is vomit. Vomit makes everyone sick but when you speak from the light you bring unity, 
you bring love you bring peace and you don't react you respond every husband here knows the issue that started the fight is no longer the issue after three hours now the whole issue is how we responded to the real issue and the whole thing about that started everything is no longer a problem because six hours later when you're sleeping on the couch you're not sleeping on the couch because of that small issue you're speaking sleeping on the couch because of how you responded and how you reacted and my friend what's happening right now in our country we need to come back to God so that the real issues can be addressed because God wants to not only fix the actions of the people who are causing injustice God wants to also fix the reactions of people who are hurt by it as well we're all in need of God we're all in need of God let's just take a moment right now where you're seated let's just lift our hands and let's just ask God for our land I know Pastor Ilya prayed for that but next 60 seconds open up your lips right now and I want you to say God change our hearts no 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 not just the the police officers not just the, these people or those say, say to you say God change my heart because we're all pointing fingers at other people but right now we need to point a finger at ourselves and say, God transform my heart is there any racism in my heart is there any prejudice in my heart am I am I having some kind of a thing against another race or another color or another tribe or another ethnic group God forgive me God wash me with your blood make me like Jesus Christ your son let your light come through me God the world doesn't need vomit they need light God give me more light in Jesus name come on 30 more seconds I want to Hear every person praying every per I know you can speak I know you can verbalize your thoughts because I see what you do on your videos so verbalize your prayer right now verbalize your repentance right now verbalize your passion for God right now oh God help us in the name of Jesus pour out a spirit of grace pour out a spirit of supplication I pray God that you will give us a heart that is contrite a heart that is broken a heart that sees Jesus the heart that loves people the heart that sympathizes with the hurting the heart God that doesn't just share an opinion but shares the light Lord we pray that you will give us grace Lord we pray that you will give us mercy in our own families God where some of us push injustice where some of us abuse where some of us God are pushing hatred in our own family God and while we condemn others of their hate God we can we, we support our own hate God deliver us from that God set us free Lord from anger set us free God from hate speech at home set us free God from all the uncleanness in our hearts God give us new hearts give us new spirits God transform us from the inside out Lord let us be a soul that didn't lose its flavor but a soul God that preserves our communities preserves our families God and makes a difference in our world in Jesus name we pray amen amen to God be the glory God is going to answer that prayer you know how? Because we are all part of the solution. That solution doesn't start on the street. It starts at home. How you treat your spouse, how you treat your kids, how you react, how you respond, my friend. It starts with me and it starts with you. Revolutions don't start at the courtroom. They start in your room, in my room. And let all of this cause us to examine our hearts, to live to God's standards, not the standards of culture. With that said, today we're celebrating the day of Pentecost and about a hundred years ago, William Seymour who went to Topeka, Kansas City and heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's seen people getting baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues but he didn't experience it himself. He came to Azusa Street in California and he started to preach the message of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. A black preacher in, uh, in the United States People start getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. God started to come mightily. People were being healed. In fact, there were reports of fire trucks coming on, on the scene because they, people saw the fire on the top of the building and they thought that the fire was actually burning the house down. But he didn't speak in tongues himself. He started to intensify his prayer going from two hours a day to six hours a day there are reports at night him putting his head in a cold concrete and crying out to God give me more of your Holy Spirit and lo and behold God baptized him in the Holy Spirit the Pen I'm a Pentecostal the Pentecostal movement started from a black preacher presenting the message the full message of the gospel and therefore as a church we have to be united while the world is separated while the world is divided we gotta come together the Holy Spirit unites us
The Bible says on the day of Pentecost they were all together in one accord. They were different people but they were in one accord and the Spirit of God came down. The verse I want to read is Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and the verse says the following, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. I want to highlight the word but. Why is Jesus saying but? Because after his resurrection disciples came and they got political. What did they say? They say Jesus is this the time Israel will become the superpower on the earth. Are you the new King David? Jesus because we got the we can get the army ready and Jesus says it's not your business when and how all of that stuff will happen the father has it in his plan what Jesus was saying is political advancements violence taking over countries bloodshed is not what he is king of he is the king of our heart and he doesn't win our heart by threats, by dominance, by sword or bloodshed. He doesn't win our heart over fear and over compulsion. He says, I win the heart through something different. And he said, but you will receive power. And no, my friend, it's not going to be white power. It's not going to be black power. It's not going to be green power. It's going to be Holy Spirit power. It changes the heart of man. It changes the life of man. It transforms the man from the inside out. Alexander the Great and so many great generals conquer the earth. But only Jesus conquers the heart. Because you don't do it with the sword. You don't do it with the force, you do it with love. And Jesus says, I did not come to conquer like the rest of them. He says, I came to conquer from the inside out. I came to take the evil, evil heart out and put a new heart in and to put the Holy Ghost inside of that heart so that that heart can function and live for the glory of God. But you will receive power. It will be a different conquest. It will be a different takeover. It will be a different advancement than any other thing the world has ever seen. Because it will not be through hate. It will not be through force. It will be through a power that works by love. The power of the Holy Spirit. My friend, do we want to see laws change? You bet we do. Do we want to see our country have laws that protect the unborn? Yes. You want to see the laws that honor God? Yes, it will help our country. But please understand, political changes don't change the heart. When there was laws against homosexuality and against abortion, it never removed the evil. It suppresses the evil. It never delivers us from evil. The blood of bulls, the blood of sheep covered the sin. But only the blood of Jesus wipes them out. What that tells me is as Christians we must take advantage of the power that's been given to us. That is the solution for the problems we see in the world today. That's what Jesus saw it. One day Jesus will come and reign. One day he will sit on the throne of David. Nations will bring him glory. One day devil will be bound and thrown into the lake of fire. One day Antichrist and all of his little stooges are going to be defeated and destroyed. One day a lion and the sheep will lie together. One day there will be peace that exists in this world when the Prince of Peace will sit on the throne of David. But until that day, his conquest is not aimed at the White House. It's aimed at your heart. It's aimed at your soul. And he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. As believers, they receive the Holy Spirit in them. The scripture says in John, at the end after Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus breathed on, on them. And when he breathed on them, he says, receive the Holy Spirit. They had the Holy Spirit with them. Because in John chapter 16, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit, you know him because he is with you, but he will be in you. He was not in them yet. He was with them. Watch this. 
three and a half years of being with Jesus did not change disciples. They still denied him, forsook him and one guy betrayed him. But the moment the Holy Spirit went from being with them to going in them, Jesus was no longer there but something happened. None of these men, 11 disciples forsook Jesus. None of them just maintained their salvation. They flipped the world right side up. They changed people. They transformed. So for those of you who are like, man, I wish I would have been with Jesus physically, my friend, I have a bad news for you. You would be unchanged. You have the best resource available to you that changed disciples. And it was not being with Jesus physically. It was having the Holy Spirit inwardly. So Jesus says, receive the Holy Spirit. And at that moment, after his resurrection, disciples went from having the Holy Spirit with them to having the Holy Spirit in them. See, when Holy Spirit is with you, he comes to be with you to convict you of sin. When Holy Spirit comes to live in you, He comes to convict you of righteousness. See many people think the Holy Spirit is in a believer to convict him of sin. But the Bible says He comes to convict the world of sin. He comes to be with you so He convicts you of sin of not believing in Jesus. Not sin of smoking. Not sin of stealing. Those are the consequences of sin. The real sin is the broken relationship between you and Jesus. And when you believe in Jesus, God gives you a new heart. God gives you a new spirit. And you begin to change on the outside because you were changed on the inside. Any changed people we have in this house this morning. My God. And when the Holy Spirit comes in me, He convicts me of righteousness. Why? Holy Spirit, yes, He reminds us of the wrong things He did. But you don't need the Holy Spirit to be reminded of the wrong things you did when you have a new nature. Your new nature will do that for you. What you do need the Holy Spirit is to remind you of who you are in Christ. Because people around you and your past and your consciousness will always remind you of your sin. You don't need the Holy Ghost to remind you of your sin when you're saved. You need the Holy Ghost to remind you you are righteous when you're saved. Because sometimes you don't feel righteous. Sometimes you feel dirty still. Sometimes you feel defeated still. Sometimes you feel alone still. And the Holy Ghost comes to remind you you are righteous my God he comes in you to convict you of righteousness he is with you to convict you of sin of not believing but then Jesus says in here in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 he says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come what does it say upon you somebody say upon or somebody say with in and somebody say upon so when, I, when He is with me, it's to convict me of sin that I don't believe in Jesus. When He is in me, it's to convict me of righteousness. He comes in me, He brings His presence in me. But then when He comes upon me, it's to bring His power. For The Bible says, so I can be, you will receive power when the Spirit will come upon you. So you shall be my witnesses, not gossipers not divas, not easily offended, not whiners and complainers but witnesses, not lawyers but witnesses, not debaters but witnesses. How many of you know you can't be a witness if you haven't seen, heard or experienced? You can only be a witness if you've seen something, heard something or experienced something. That tells me that when the Holy Spirit comes He'll release His power this power will cause things to happen that I have a testimony of. That I can testify, I can witness of something. Why? Because I've seen things, because I've heard things, because I've experienced things. The Holy Spirit in me develops my character, but the Holy Spirit upon me releases me into ministry. My friends, Pentecost is not to make you Pentecostal. Pentecost is to make you powerful to fulfill your purpose and our purpose is to win souls and make disciples. Pentecost is not so that we can have an addition to our prayer language. Pentecost is so that we can have a meaning in our Christian life of reaching the lost for Jesus Christ, of making disciples for Jesus Christ. Can somebody give God some praise right now? Hallelujah. Is there something to wipe my face? You can't have 
more of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. When I got married, I got all of my wife. She did not come in parts. <laughs> I didn't get half of her on the wedding and the other half two years later. She did not come in sections. She didn't come in measures. She came all at once. But I am taking 10 years already to still figure her out. <laughs> She's a deep mystery. I, you don't get, that's why you shouldn't pray, Lord, give me more of your spirit. You should pray, Lord, help me to know your spirit more. Come on. And ask God, give me more because God gave you the Holy Spirit. He didn't give you a spirit. He didn't give you junior spirit. He didn't give you a trial spirit. He didn't give you like let's see how you do it with the spirit. He gave you the same power. The same spirit. But the issue is that you can know him more and you can know him less. We all receive the same Holy Spirit at our salvation. Now the challenge is to release this Holy Spirit. The problem is not receiving it. The challenge we have is how to release what we've received. Because you have the Holy Spirit the same way that there's water connected to your house and the secret is not to call the city say add more pressure to the water in my house. The secret is to find a faucet that could release that water. Find a hose that can release that water and find a purpose for it because if you don't have a purpose for it, for it, you'll flood the house. If you have the power of the Holy Spirit but you don't have a purpose that you're deciding to live for, you are going to flood your spiritual life. You are not going to help people. You're going to use it to become famous. You're going to use it to become more important. You will use it for your advancement instead of advancement of the kingdom of God. The miracles and signs and wonders, they're not given so we can start ministries. They're given so we can win the lost and so we can see the mission of Jesus continue on this earth. Can somebody say amen. amen. And so right now in the conclusion of this message, I would like to, I would like to just touch on uh, four things that we can do to release the Holy Spirit. I understand that I've taken already uh, more time. So the first thing that I would like to mention is this. When you surrender to the Holy Spirit, you release the Holy Spirit. When you surrender to the Holy Spirit, you release the Holy Spirit. When Jesus died on a cross, He died for us. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, it says, For no longer I've been crucified with Christ, no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live for Him who died for me. That tells me we as Christians believe that Jesus died in our place on the cross. Can somebody say amen? You don't have to die for your sin because Jesus already did that. Can somebody say amen? amen. Those of you watching us on live stream, comment below and say that you agree. If you agree with that. If you don't agree, we're going to get you saved right now. Because Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Paul says that Jesus died in our place for our sin. If you don't accept Jesus' death, my friend, you're going to have to pay for your own sins. But then when you get saved, Paul says this, life that I live now I live I don't live for God he lives out of me he says that I no longer live he lives through me what I find challenging is that's my personal challenge I believe Jesus died for me I do have a hard time behaving in the way that he lives through me because I, like many Christians, seek to live for God. Which is the biggest hindrance to letting God live through you. I, like many Christians, instead of surrendering to the Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit live through me, I strive to please the Holy Spirit. The secret to Christian character is not to try to change it. It's to stop trying at all and surrender. And surrender is the hardest thing to do because it gives you no credit for doing anything. That's why Christian character is called the fruit of the Spirit. It's not called the fruit of your discipline, New Year's resolutions, efforts and trying hard. 
my friend if you want to release the Holy Spirit into your life and the power of the Holy Spirit you have to learn stop working on your character as much and start working on your relationship with the Holy Spirit start cultivating intimacy with the Holy Spirit because only the Holy Spirit can change certain behaviors inclinations and proclivities that are still lingering in your life you cannot do that by trying harder you can do that by trying different and that different is surrender to the Holy Spirit I remember one time I made that announcement to my wife and I said babe I am no longer going to live for God she looked at me she's like I said from now on I'm gonna let God live through me she's like okay you get it good good but honestly I started to practice that a mental shift where I don't live for God I couldn't earn my salvation I cannot earn my sanctification Holy Spirit has to live through me and the moment I give the Holy Spirit not a shotgun but a driver's seat because many of us got the Holy Spirit as a shotgun but you're still in charge of your life give the Holy Spirit the driver's seat let him live through you you know that at the first Pentecost in the Old Testament was 50 days after Israel came out of Egypt and the 50 days after Israel came out of the Egypt Moses received Ten Commandments that was the Pentecost 3,000 people died when God gave law to men it brought death until Moses got the law all the complaining Israel did never once they got punished for it the moment they got the law the first first time they complained snakes came the moment they built a a cow death came right away 3,000 people died but on the day of Pentecost 50 days after Jesus' death God didn't send the law and God didn't send Moses he sent his spirit 3,000 people lived because they were saved I'm going to tell you my friend the solution is not to suppress your flesh the solution is to surrender to the Holy Spirit the solution is not to put more guardrails more rules in your life if rules would have worked Ten Commandments would have made people holy I'm not against rules. Rules have their place. But in Christian faith, we understand it's the relationship with Holy Spirit that changes me, not the rules. Having more rules is not going to make me holy. Having, knowing the Holy Spirit more is going to make me holy. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> the second way that we surrender to the Holy Spirit is by speaking in tongues. Surrendering to the Holy Spirit the, the surrender to the Holy Spirit allows him to produce a character with us, with us. The second way that I release the Holy Spirit in my life is by speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a great blessing from God. Isaiah chapter 11 verse, Isaiah 28, uh, Isaiah chapter 28 verse 11 and verse 12 it says the following. It says that you will speak to these people through with stammering lips and a no tongue. That's how you will speak to these people and you will say this is the rest for the weary and this is refreshing yet you would not in the old testament god already started to give symbols of what will it look like when the person releases the holy spirit by speaking in tongues they will experience refreshing and rest in jude it says when we pray in the holy spirit we build our faith in corinthians it says when we pray in the holy spirit we edify meaning we build ourselves up it's a spiritual workout speaking in tongues is a workout to your spirit it's building of your spiritual muscles in Corinthians it also says that when you speak in tongues you can bless God thank God and you can actually give thanks to God through speaking in tongues by speaking in tongues you can also make intercession and pray for things you don't even know to pray for it says in Romans so what I want to tell you something is that the way you release the great power of the Holy Spirit in your life is when you surrender. Stop striving. If you want to see a change in your character, the Bible doesn't say don't fulfill the lust of the flesh and then you'll walk in the Spirit. It says walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's not about getting your character issues under control. It's getting your intimacy going so that it could influence your character flaws the way you release the power of the Holy Spirit is not trying to control your life it's trying to yield to the Holy Spirit so he gives you self-control the second way is when you speak in tongues feel confused speak in tongues feel lost speak in tongues feel like not connected to God speak in tongues feel discouraged speak in tongues feel not sure what to do speak in tongues this is refreshing 
and this is spiritual renewal by speaking in tongues speaking in tongues is a language of surrender speaking in tongues changes things in the spirit atmosphere and for those of you who are like yeah remember husbands how many times your words got you in trouble you didn't even lift a finger you just opened up your mouth and everything in the house changed you spent two days on the couch after that just because you ran your mouth what would happen the spiritual realm changes when you open your mouth and you speak in tongues God did not create creation out of chaos by moving his hands he sat on his throne and he spoke the world into existence only when it came to you and I that he moved with his hands right now God wants to baptize people in the Holy Spirit you already have the Holy Spirit as a Christian but if you don't speak in tongues right now is going to be a moment where God's going to touch you and you're going to just surrender your tongue that's really how you get the Holy Spirit is you open your mouth the Bible says you open it and I feel it you open your mouth and by faith you begin to release sounds trusting the Holy Spirit adds meaning to them and the Holy Spirit takes over and the Holy Spirit takes over there are people watching us on live stream there are people in this room who are here today and God prepared this day since the beginning of your Christian walk to baptize you in the Holy Spirit right now not toward the end but right now if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says God has already given you the Holy Spirit all you gotta do is you have to release the Spirit by speaking a language and God adds meaning to that in Jesus name in fact let's just do that right now while you're seated stretch your hands like this the whole church there's many of you you're baptized in the Holy Spirit you're filled with the you're filled with the Holy Spirit for those of you watching us on live stream this is your moment maybe you've always wanted it you're like man this was this is not a strange thing Jesus talked about it apostles every writer of New Testament spoke in tongues so this is nothing strange this is not some Pentecostal craziness this is as normal as it gets to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit for those of you struggling to control your tongue this is your best remedy is to yield it surrender it to the Holy Spirit let's say this prayer out loud with me say Lord Jesus I thank you for the Holy Spirit Lord Jesus I receive your Holy Spirit oh Holy Spirit come right now fill me with the kingdom of God fill me with the presence of God fill me with the fire of God in Jesus name I surrender my body and my tongue to you right now I trust that every syllable you will add meaning to in Jesus name with eyes closed open up your lips with now just begin to pray in tongues whatever the syllables come out come on for the next 60 seconds every person for those of you just trust the Holy Spirit the syllables that will come out don't filter them don't overthink them just release them just release them just as a child as a child remember it's a language of surrender it's not a language of educated it's not a language of the rich or the wealthy it's the language of a child to a father close your eyes just open up let the rivers of living water flow from your innermost right now God is filling people with the Holy Spirit all over this room all over the live stream right now as you are sitting in your living room open up your lips and just let the river come out it could be a one syllable just repeat it just let it go come on church 30 more seconds 30 more seconds open up your lips let it flow some of you will sing in the spirit some of you will worship in the spirit right now some of you will intercede in the spirit right now come on church few more minutes Holy Spirit is moving the river of God is flowing right now in this room spirit of refreshing there is a refreshing that is coming right now in this house there is a spiritual building that is coming right now upon you Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit baptize your people right now. Holy Spirit fill your people right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. The way we release the Holy Spirit 
is by surrendering to the Holy Spirit to change us from the inside. The way we release the Holy Spirit is by speaking in tongues. For those of you who spoke in tongues for the first time, I'm going to ask you practice it. Pray it all the time. Pray all the time in the Holy Spirit. Number three is the way we release the Holy Spirit is when we share the good news. The power of the Holy Spirit is released into the world when we open our mouth and we share the good news. There's a lot of fake news right now everywhere. There's a lot of bad news but when you share the good news, the power of the Holy Spirit is released. And lastly, the way we release the Holy Spirit is when we have supernatural expectation to happen in our life. Meaning, when we expect impossible to take place, when we make room for miracles, how do we do that? By the way we pray, by the things we expect and by the dreams we have. It's interesting because these three don't require master's degree. These three don't require for you to come and be born in a good family. These three don't require a certain skin color, a certain religious status, and a certain thing that you need to have that the world says you need to have. How you pray, what you expect, and what you dream of. The challenge with many of us is if we don't surrender to the Holy Spirit, He doesn't produce the character. If we don't speak in tongues, we don't receive the refreshing. If we don't share the good news of Jesus and we don't make disciples, we will not see the moving of God in our communities. But there's one big thing also. Many of us play too safe and we give the Holy Spirit no room to move. The Bible says in Psalm, again and again they tempted God, listen to this, and limited the Holy One of Israel. Meaning what Israel did is the things they asked for, the things they expected and the things they dreamed of put a cap on God and God says, I felt trapped. I was incarcerated by your negativity. You only saw your past, you never saw anything else and God says, you put me in a casket. Can you release the incarcerated prince, the Holy Spirit? Pray bold prayers, not small prayers. That's why when the apostles got beaten for preaching the gospel, they did not pray for safety, they prayed for boldness. Because they said a great power is living in us. We can't limit it by just saying, God, keep us safe. We were called to change the world, not to live comfortable. And they said, God, stretch your hand to do miracles, signs and wonders. And the Bible says, God came and shook that place. God says, I like that prayer. I know the threat came from the government and the religious institutions, but you didn't limit me by only asking for safety. You prayed bold prayers. Don't just pray to God, give me strength to recover or get through the cancer. Say, God, heal me from cancer. Don't just pray, God, keep my kids away from trouble in school. Say, God, let my kids possess the gates of their enemies. We're not just praying, God, give us a bigger building. We say, God, make us a movement that the devil cannot stop. My friend, don't limit the Holy One of Israel. You might have no money, but you have faith. You may have no resources, but you have an expectation. When you wake up in the morning, don't expect everything to go bad. Expect good things to come to you. Why? Because you have the Holy One of Israel who says, make me room. Give me room to move. Give me room in your faith. Give me room in your prayer. Give me room in your expectation. But what if nothing happens? See, you're only thinking about your father and your mother that maybe nothing happened to. You're only thinking about your friends. Think about the Holy Spirit. Even if you only have to dream big, pray big and expect big only to honor the Holy Spirit, do it for His sake. Don't pray small prayers. Don't dream small dreams. Don't expect bad things. Why? Because the Holy One of Israel could be incarcerated, limited. The Bible says the living water wants to flow out like a river 
for some of us it's not a river it's a stream and there's some of us it drops and the rest of us nothing not because the water is not there it's my prayer the size of my prayer and I'm not talking about the length the size that means I can go and pray for two hours God 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 I'm doing so bad and that's what Israel did in the wilderness it's so horrible we missed the onions we missed the cucumbers of Egypt it was so good in Egypt God's like I don't get it you whined in Egypt you want it out and now oh God it's so bad so bad and instead of enlarging in their prayer make them bold and saying God the giants are our food they are our grasshoppers we can't wait to conquer that land because the fear has fallen on the promised land we will eat milk and honey God you crushed Pharaoh you will crush every giant God you are the Holy One of Israel your cloud is with us your fire is with us God what nation is there that has God as their God you are our God you are our King we don't even have a King but you are our King we're just bunch of slaves but without medical insurance without hospitals none of us are sick God you're so good we don't have restaurants but you gave us manna oh God you're so good we can't wait to get the promised land that would have released the Holy One of Israel that would have released the power of God God wants to be released God is tired of being trapped God is tired of being handicapped by small prayers safe prayers bad dreams and all this stuff it's time to rise and ask for big things let's rise on Wednesday I was doing a conference on zoom with my friend Matt and Angelica wrote she says I spoke in tongues tonight I was baptized in the Holy Spirit thank you Jesus Rosalind said I felt heat in my back like electricity and I'm healed of asthma Ernest said my back is healed I can fully touch the floor with my hands Stephanie said I had a horrible migraine for three days and now it's gone I can't stop crying Sergio said something just left my throat Cecilia said my ears popped Yana says I was healed of eczema praise God and Wednesday before the zoom meeting I said God I know this is weird having a conference on the zoom I don't know there's no music like there this atmosphere is different but God I'm believing for ridiculous healings God I know I'm in my flip-flops in my office but I'm believing God through that you will do something I've never seen done because see I understand it doesn't take a lot for me to ask for big things but it could mean a lot to God when God hears his kid not just asking for something small knowing God is able what if you pray big prayers and nothing happens I'd rather die in faith than live in fear my friend I want to challenge you he who lives in you is greater than he who's in the world I want to challenge you what Elijah told to his servant he says there is more with us than those against us I want to challenge you that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me it's time to reclaim your faith back it's time to reclaim your fire back it's time to reclaim your boldness and it's time to stop limiting the Holy One of Israel by small prayers expect good things expect miracles to happen this week for you expect doors to open for your business expect doctors report that will come in positive expect that when you lay hands on the sick they won't die they will live and declare the glory of God expect your child will come back home and they will not dry out of, die out of drugs expect that things will turn around for your spouse in Jesus name right now what I want us to do is we're gonna pray for miracles because the day of Pentecost is the best day to pray for miracles and nothing impossible is possible with God now in Jesus name if you're watching us on live stream if if Ilya and Ivan come up right now if you're watching us and you have a sickness that you're fighting with right now let's agree together if you're in this room right now and you're battling with the disease you're battling with something that is maybe incurable I know you're fighting it this is not a moment to tap out this is a moment to take a step forward and fight with us as well you're already a fighter People sometimes message me, they said, I'm not sure God wants me to be, to be healed. I say, you're only not sure on, on Sunday. Because on Monday, you're taking medicine like nobody's business. Because you're certain, I want to beat this thing. And then on Sunday, you become theologically schizophrenic. Because you're not sure. And I was like, if you're so not sure, throw away the medicine then. I said, but you won't do that because you know it's God's will for you to be healthy. Why don't you agree with us right now? God is on your side. He wants to help you. 
we've seen a lot of people being healed we're not against medicine we're for medicine please take medicine go to the doctors get a health insurance but there are certain demons that stand behind sicknesses that only the blood of Jesus can conquer eczema you know asthma arthritis tumors they have a name and they're gonna bow before the name of Jesus place your hand upon the part of your body where there is pain if you're watching us on live stream if you have eating disorders place your hand upon the part of the body where there is pain right now and let's pray together say this out loud with me say my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit my body is not for sickness and it's not for disease I take authority in the name of Jesus over every spirit of infirmity and I command it to go in Jesus name oh Holy Spirit I look to Jesus for the healing touch in my body in Jesus name in Jesus come on can you command the command the Father, right now we come against every person that has a problem with their stomach right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we come against that problem in the mighty name of Jesus. Every breathing disorder, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against that darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. Skin conditions, be restored in Jesus' mighty name. We come against that in the mighty name of Jesus. Every problem with cancer, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. We release our faith over that body, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. We come against every spiritual force that is in a Lifting that body in Jesus' mighty name. We push that darkness away in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come against every pain in joints. We come against every arthritis in Jesus' mighty name. Every arthritis in hips, in, in any joints, knees. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is watching who has arthritis in the right hand and it's painful for you to move right now. Begin to move it. Begin to receive your healing in Jesus mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We come against every arthritis. You spirit of torment. You spirit of infirmity. Right now we command you to lose your grip over God's people. In Jesus name. Be free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every spasms right now, we command you to lose your grip. Uh, lose, your, lose your grip in Jesus' mighty name. Every muscle spasms right now are leaving your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. We come against every growth in your body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every precancerous pre growth, every cancerous growth right now, we come against you, we destroy you, we approach you in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, every lump, we command you to disappear in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, we curse every cancer, we curse every lump, we curse every growth, we command you wither and tie in Jesus' name. Leave God's people alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive your healing, receive your healing, receive your healing in Jesus' mighty name. Receive your healing in Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray right now for those people who are, who are facing financial problems. Let's right now lift every single person who is facing. Let's just raise our hands to church. There are people watching us right now who are facing huge financial problems. Let's believe right now for supernatural financial supply. As God did in the wilderness for the children of Israel. Let's open up our lips for the next 60 seconds. Begin to right now declare a miracle money. Let's begin to pray right now for a supernatural debt cancellation. For open doors for jobs. For people to be able to, to be able to come out of that financial problem in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we agree right now in Jesus' yes, mighty, in the mighty name. name of Jesus. Cool. Father, you are Jehovah Jireh, our mm. provider. Father, yes, we lift our hands in faith, Father, that you will provide, Father God. However you're going to do it, Father, we ask you, God, that you would fill our barns and vats. God, give us ideas. Is God father supernaturally God debts being canceled father we stretch our hands to you God in the mighty name of Jesus father we ask for favor in the mighty name of Jesus open those doors father God for business deals contracts jobs and better jobs father God debts being canceled father God paid off in the mighty name of Jesus we stretch our hands Lord believing you God God just as you said 
to Peter, cast that net on the other side. Father God, we're casting our faith to you, God. Provide, Father God, supernaturally, Lord, you are a supernatural God. We stretch our faith to you, God. Believe in you, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, I want to close your eyes and bow your head. If you are watching us or if you are in this room and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would like to give you an opportunity on this day when the Holy Spirit came upon church, 3,000 people got saved. God is interested in your salvation. God came through Jesus and died in your place for your sin. The Bible says sin separates men from God. Not only on this earth do we experience suffering and demonic torment, but for eternity without the end. There is no expiration. Eternity is very, very long. It's very, very hot and it doesn't have an end. It's a place of hopeless suffering. It's not a place where God created for the humans, but for the devil and his demons. But everyone who denies Jesus, who lives in sin, follows the devil. That's exactly what they're going after with the devil. You don't want to go there. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, today is the best day. Don't postpone it for tomorrow. Don't comfort yourself with, oh, I'm a good person. If you would be a good enough, God wouldn't send Jesus on the cross. You are not good enough to go to heaven. You might be good enough not to go to jail. You're not good enough not to go to heaven. Maybe you're saying, well, I grew up Catholic. My friend, God, you don't become a Christian by going to a Catholic church or Christian church. You become a Christian by following Jesus and repenting of your sin. If you would like to do that today and you say, Vlad, I would like to accept Jesus in my heart. I would like to accept Him as my Lord and my Savior. If you are in this building, I want you to just raise your hand. Thank you. I see your hand, brother. Thank you. If you're watching us on live stream, you can just comment below and say, hey, I would like to pray that prayer. Let's pray the prayer together with me right now. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood. I surrender my whole life to you right now. Come and live in me. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus name. Amen. For those of you who pray the prayer and you are in this room, we would love to see you in a VIP room. And Ricardo, could you wave your hand at me? That's where VIP room is going to be in that room. If you're a first time guest, your first time in our church, whether in town or out of town, we would love to see you there. want to give you a gift and meet you. And if you pray that prayer, if you're watching us on live stream, go to hungrygen.com slash VIP if you pray that prayer. Let us know so we can reach out to you and pray for you. Church, before we exit right now, we would like to let you know that we will have only about three minutes to be in this facility before we need to sanitize it and prepare it for the next service. We're going to take our offering time right now. We have three ways to give. One of them is the traditional, the envelope in front of your pew. The other way is through our Church Center app. You can download Church Center app and then you can set up your giving there. Or you can go to hungrygen.com slash give. It's your giving that helps us to support. Uh, on Friday, uh, one of the things that we did this week is we gathered, if we can just take a moment and pause before going anywhere, just for a second. On Friday, one of the things that we did with our team after prayer is we, we bought really nice um, products and food and groceries and brought to the elderly in our park because we're trying to also establish a better relationship with the elderly people. Uh, those are the people that right now are going through a very difficult time because they're more exposed to this virus. And so your giving helps us to do a lot of good in our community. It also helps to spread the Word of God to all the parts of the world. If you're watching us on live, be a part of this as well. You know, this is not a moment to just turn it off. This is the moment to join in. Hungrygen.com slash give. Let's pray for our giving right now. And you can drop your offering on your way out today. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to give into your kingdom. I thank you for the opportunity that we have today, God, to work and to do good in our community through our finances. I pray, God, as we bring our tithes, as we bring our offerings today, I pray for every family. I pray for every father, every mother, every college student every retired man and any retired woman that you're going to supply their needs according to your riches and your glory God and let father our church advance the kingdom of Jesus 
let our church advance the message and the agenda of heaven in our community and to all the world let more people be saved healed and delivered through this ministry because we give because we love lord bless every giver today god in the name of jesus in this hard time help us to not only survive but thrive financially in jesus name amen